We're back with another episode of the Evolve Your Brand podcast. And I've got another spontaneous guest jumping on today. He is coach Alex Beasley, originally from Venezuela, living in the United States right now. And he is a transformational breakup recovery coach. And we had a really interesting chat talking about betrayal and what that emotion and experience is like. And I thought it would be so cool to have him come on and talk to us today. Without further ado, welcome on the podcast, Alex. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, just just to rectify a little bit, like I, I'm, I'm from France. I was born in France. Uh, my mother, my mother is from Venezuela, so mm. that's what it is. Yeah, get the Venezuelan blood and the French connection. So mm. let's dive right into it. What okay. was this experience or moment in your life where you experienced betrayal that's led you to now helping others to deal with something? similar okay so the betrayal i I experienced was so you know it was a first love first real love situation where um when i graduated high school i decided my father had moved to the u.s for a year already and i decided to go and um closer to him to the u.s so i could learn english for one year but at the time, you know, I had been in that relationship with this girl for about two years already, and we couldn't resolve to end the 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 relationships bef- the relationship before I left. And we had told each other that she might come to the U.S. too, so I was kind of here in, in New York City waiting waiting for her to join me, right? But it didn't go that way. <laughs> So I came to the U.S. I was, you know, in this English school where I was taking classes every day to learn English, uh, surrounded by all these foreigners. And um, and so what happened was as soon as I left, everything changed. Like she just started being more distant. And basically everything we had said to each other before I left kind of didn't hold anymore and so for a long time i was kind of just in uh, in denial i was still trying to text her figuring out like you know okay so what's happening when are you coming and stuff and i could see that she wasn't on the same page page anymore and uh i had planned to go back to france uh in december to see her so i had left what like at the end of august September, so September, October, November, December. So yeah, about like maybe three, three to four months away from her. And a week before I went back to France to go and see her and visit her, like she called me on the phone and she broke up with me. Wow. And uh, so that was crazy because that was literally the only reason I was coming back to France. Like when I went there, my mom wasn't even there. Uh, so I went there and I was by myself. And at that time, I just had given her a lot of my stuff so she could, you know, do what she needed to do while I I was away. I was just like, okay, you can take my, you can take my scooter. I had a little scooter, like, you know, motorcycle type of situation. And I was like, you know what, I'm not going to be here. So if you want to move around, you can use it. I was just like super naive and so nice and open hearted that just gave her everything. And she used it to the point where it wouldn't work anymore. So when I came home, the motorcycle broke down. She broke up with me. I had no way to move around. I was by myself. And then I started learning stuff. Oh, like she was with that dude. Then there was a lot of other things happening around this situation. And so it was just really overwhelming. Um, I had given my full trust to that person and she really abused it in all the ways possible and so every time then after that every time i would get a little better like months would pass and 
some new new details would come to my ears and so it would just like take me back crashing down mm. uh so it's it's been tough to recover from that and uh but it taught me a lot as well and the problem and the reason i i want to help people recover from from breakups is for them to um avoid the mistakes i did because i didn't really know how to i didn't really know how to deal with my own emotion and how to process all that and so i fell into the trap of like you know falling into new relationships like right away when i wasn't ready for them because i was so i had so many trust issues i was telling myself oh i'll never i'll never be in love again and stuff so like you know you you involve yourself with people who actually are really nice people and that you care for but you're not you're not ready for it and you're not emotionally available and you end up hurting them yeah i see that that, no yeah i see that a lot of men are getting into these situations more and more these days where they feel betrayed they feel broken they feel like they were let down and they were let on and i'm wondering why you think that is why why do you think you got into that situation like do you think that men are weak these days in our society i think we're not taught how to deal with our emotions and we're not taught how to set boundaries clear boundaries and recognize what's okay and not okay so then we build all those expectations on how people should behave when really it's up to us to set the standards and you know appropriate boundaries for them for for bad situation not to happen to us but the fact that we're not we're not really taught how to deal with our emotions it's it's complicated because on some level like you know before it was oh no don't don't like you know it was kind of repressing our emotions so much and like not deal with them and now it feels like it's the other extreme where everyone is like super emotional and like but we don't know how to it's like hmm, we act on emotions too much when we should learn how to feel them but not act on them and understand what the message are from those emotions does that does that make sense yeah there's a lot of reactivity in the world these days and everyone is so quick to jump to conclusions about one another and forgiveness is oftentimes lost Mm. yes you know i I really resonated with your story uh, because I had one experience that was kind of similar where I met a girl in Australia and we started traveling around California. And when things ended, I went back to Australia to see her and the communication wasn't the same. And some things happened and I felt, I felt really hurt. Um, But at least on that front, I was able to forgive that person, you know, for their age, their immaturity and like what they were going through at the time and move on. And, but I've also noticed in the coaching industry and becoming an online entrepreneur, a lot of people are in the paradigm of scarcity and they're really coming from a place of competition and everything is about who's doing better? Are you stealing my clients? And a very competitive framework, so much so that I've been publicly, you know, shamed multiple times over the last three years. And I've experienced this, um, quote unquote, betrayal, either someone felt that towards me, or I felt that towards others. And I know that that emotion is something that a lot of us just don't know how to deal with when it comes up because it's so it's so unique. And so what I'm wondering is, um, how do you let go of grudges and the story of betrayal? You know, when you when you feel betrayed and you're blaming the other person, look, you might be right about a lot of things and it's OK to acknowledge that. But what really helped me personally is when I started taking accountability for my part, when I realized that actually there was a bunch of red flags that I had ignored the whole time. 
because I didn't want to feel hurt by them at the time. I don't know. Like I was, my best mechanism at the time was to self-preserve and ignore, ignore those red flags, right? But also later I started putting myself in her shoes and be like, oh yeah, but at the time this was happening in her life and she wasn't having a good time. And also I was kind of annoying and codependent. So I wasn't the best, the best person. And that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily make her actions. Okay. But you can understand where the person was coming from. Oh yeah. Okay. She hurt me but she was going through something and okay, levels of immaturity in that, but it wasn't necessarily personal. Like she wasn't trying to actively hurt me. And even if she was trying to actively hurt me, that has nothing to do with me. That really has more to do with how she felt in, inside and she didn't know how to deal with that situation in a better way, I guess. I mean, that's what, that's what helped me like release grudges. Yeah. And you talked about how relationships are the biggest teachers in our life. And I really mm -hmm. resonated with that because I'm someone that really struggled with communication and relationships growing up. And I put all this time and effort into learning about masculine and feminine dynamics and the tonality that we use in our body language and the way in which to approach someone from a genuine or authentic or vulnerable place. Um, mm -hmm. And I've also come to realize there are so many lessons in friendship and in mentorship, whether, you know, you are being mentored by someone else or whether you are the coach or guide or consultant and, um, Many times we carry patterns into our work, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether we're trying to get some somewhere in life or whether we've, you know, we've got clients as well, we carry these patterns that come up at certain points and express themselves as anger, as frustration, as yeah. victimhood, as blame. And it's those patterns that repeat over and over and over again until we not only become aware of them, but we also completely accept them and release around that subconscious pattern that's been programmed into our mind. And when it comes to actually pursuing purpose in life. I, I don't believe you can really truly be on your purpose if you're carrying around all this weight and all this baggage of your trauma and of your relationships that haven't been fully come to peace with. And yeah. um, I guess my question to you is, what does finding purpose in life mean to you? Hmm. Well, finding purpose in my life. That's, yeah, that's a loaded question too. Uh, it can go many ways, I guess. Uh, oh, I'm not giving you easy questions to walk over here, Alex. <laughs> no, we're going to go deep. And, yeah. um, and, you know, when it comes to finding your purpose, it really, it really is indicative of how much you want to break free from the survival paradigm, the scarcity paradigm. So what's that been like for you, your journey towards uh, becoming the hero of your story? Yeah. Well, to me, it came, well, yeah, to me, and the way I ended up being where I am today was really by studying my past every big chapter of my life and trying to see the the connections and the lessons and what I took out of those situations. And hmm. 
I'm sorry. I have to think about this because that's a, that's yeah, that's an interesting question. But like for me, I always had I always had the feeling, when, even when I was young, that I wanted to do something to make the world better. And they always say, you know, all those uh, personal development people, they always say, get back to what you really liked when you were a kid, right? And when I was a kid, that's what it was. Uh, my dad loved traveling, and we traveled a bunch of different places when I was a kid. And we always saw, you know, I saw a lot of people struggling and a lot of injustice and it was always something that I carried with me and when I graduated from high school I wanted to study political science because you know my mom is from Venezuela and I saw the situation over there and I wanted to do something make the world a better place right yeah. after those, after those two years of political science I just came out of there completely uh disillusioned by it feeling like oh well there's no way we can change anything from within the political system because every single people that have good ideas and want to do something for the better get killed or then there's too much corruption and it's too tough so then i decided to focus on myself and then i came to well, you know the place of personal development and um getting to know yourself and spirituality and and that's when i realized that for me i think we change the world by changing ourselves within first. And when you get to know yourself, so getting to know yourself within your body, getting to know yourself, like who you are as a person, who do you want to become? What kind of impact you want to have on the people around you and on society? What's your, what the, what's the value that you can bring to people? Like how can you serve humanity in the best way with your own skills and like your authentic self, right? And for me, that was that I always was, I always was, even in middle school, high school, I was, always was that friend that people, you know, felt comfortable to come and talk to because I always had like, I don't know, a good word or some insight to provide them, even though I didn't have, you know, I didn't have all the coaching skills that I had today, but that's always something that I was doing. And so when I heard about the coaching space and I looked into it, I was like, you know what? I, th I think that's really what I'd like to do. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to get a career that I don't like just for money. I, I really want to do something that means something to me. And that lights my, my, my heart up that I'm excited to do every day. And at the end of the day, I think that's what it is looking, finding your purpose is to find something that you can do every day that you're excited to do and that, you know, you're, doing good around the world and you're making people's life better. I think serving is the most, yeah, find how you can serve. That's how you find purpose. That's what I think. Beautiful. I love it. And I think that finding out about the depths of understanding service on a deeper level allowed myself to create a more impactful experience for many of the people who have decided to pay me money and be a part of my coaching programs. Um, because I don't think that the service paradigm or pattern is something that I was grown up with in school or in society, you know, in order to serve others, you do need to serve yourself first. And I didn't ever have the chance to take that time to work on myself and serve myself until I left the United States in 2020, uh, in 2012, when I was 21. But as I've grown more in my own development, being able to serve others on it could be a micro or macro scale is oftentimes the energetic shift that allows me to let go of the grudge to let go of the anger or the frustration with that person or maybe i feel like they owe me an apology but when i step more into that place of service I no longer even need anything from that person. I can be completely at peace 
with them and with the world just because I'm operating at this higher level frequency. So what's it been like for you to become more conscious and aware and and what's been the biggest shift in your ability to connect with yourself and with others? Well, again, like relationships really helped with that because they always give you feedback. You know, sometimes you say something and you don't mean anything weird. You don't mean anything mean, but uh, you offended the person in front of you and you're like, oh, wow. And then like you feel shame, you feel shame. And mm -hmm. later on, if you reflect on it, you might get the lesson. Oh, okay, why, why did I feel that way? Was I, was that person right? Or is, is she overreacting? But sometimes they're right. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay, I can't say that anymore. Or that what what I said, like, yeah, no, that wasn't true. I can't, you know. So it's it's about being flexible and being willing to to observe your own beliefs and thought patterns. Because at the end of the day, nobody knows. Nobody. I always come from the perspective the perspective that I don't know anything. I know what I think I know, but that's it. Someone might come along and tell me something that contradicts everything that I believe. And I have to be able to sit there and pay attention and try to understand where they're coming from in order to, you know, take, take what's good and weed out what's I, what I think is, is, is not aligned with the truth. Yeah. Uh, but if, yeah, that's, that's really all it's about. And when you start doing this, then... Well, that you're you're strengthening a muscle which is like to be less judgmental and more open-minded and when you're like that then you argue less mm. you argue less and you're able to have more conversation with uh, more people and when you approach people from a perspective of curiosity about learning instead mm. of trying to convince people that what you think is right well first of all you learn but second of all, then like people don't feel like you're fighting them. So you're, you're able to build better connection and, and, and we all learn. And I think that's a good thing. And, and for me, hmm, well, becoming more aware, it can be a sour, uh, uh, a sour pill too, because like, for example, like talking about relationships, like maybe my relationship with my dad, when I moved to the US, it was the first time in 10 years that I lived in the same city as him. And I was really excited. And at that point, my dad, you know, I, I had idealized him like, because he wasn't living with me. So every time I would see him, it was in vacation, and it was always great times. But I had this vision of him, like he was like, perfect. And he had a moral code that I, I had a moral code that i thought he had and he's a great person don't get me wrong but he's a human being and everyone he everyone is flawed and and i had repressed i, I kind of had repressed all those feelings of oh my dad left when i was a kid he's been away for 10 years and i had repressed all that because i was seeking his validation and during the lockdown of COVID, um, all these things, all these things came back up. And when they came back up, I get I got very angry, and I felt like I had to have the conversation with him, which is crazy because we had had a, another conversation before that where I told him, "No, I never, I never had any resentment for you." Uh, you know, I was telling him, yeah, that I, 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 I had no, no anger towards him, but I was lying to myself. He was there. I was just seeking that acceptance and love from him. So I thought that for him to love me, I had to say that to, to, to him, but it was so, when I, when I said that to him, I really believed it. And then this year during COVID, everything came back up and <laughs> so 
we had that conversation. I just started telling him everything that he was doing that really disappointed me and yeah. pissed me off uh, in, in his uh, in the way he acted sometimes because he wasn't he wasn't holding the standards I had for him. And then I realized that was really unfair. Yeah, I was like I, I'm I'm asking him to be a superhero, perfect model model, and that's not fair at all. But that that's a part of being becoming more aware, right? Everything came back up and. The anger is there, but then when it's expressed, we're able to to shift the relationship and be like, okay, everything came out, we expressed, we still love each other. Now we can build on better foundations. I think as men, we don't often have the opportunity to talk with other men about our experiences with our fathers. Yeah. And for many of us, you know, guys in the world, we are interacting in a certain way based off of the way in which our father treated us. <laughs> and, you know, for me, that, that similar situation, I didn't hold back and say what I thought my father wanted to hear. Like I said, exactly what I felt in the moment and I was firing. I was like, I don't appreciate this. It was just a few months ago. And, um, you know, it's like most likely your parents aren't going to change. Your brother and sister, they're not going to change. Your friends from high school, not going to change. So the only person that can make a possible shift or change in the way that they communicate, react, respond energetically is you, is mm -hmm. me, is us. And I've noticed that being here in this very magical beach hippie town in Mexico. It's called Sayolita. That okay. by shifting my energy, that I don't need to carry around the grudge, the story of betrayal from the former client or the former friend or whoever it is. I don't need to feel like anyone owes me anything or an apology if they feel like giving back what we had agreed upon, then it will be accepted and received, but always seeking to control and to have everything in a way that is manageable is unrealistic and it's also unhealthy. For me, and this is a big lesson and intention behind my time here and talking to you today is about when we get into that flow state and we let go of control, we don't need to carry around resentment or betrayal or remorse or grudges. We can be fully at peace and we can move on and meet the new love of our life. Mm -hmm. Well, with that being said, I would love to hear from you about how you are evolving your brand around dating and relationship breakup and recovery uh, in this coming year. Yeah, well, it's been a journey. Uh, I started I started by my intention, really my intention is to help people become the best version of themselves. Yeah. To find healing and be able to express themselves authentically settle boundaries so they can yeah have the best experience in life and 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 bring their light to the world so my first approach was to go into the stress management space because as you said in order to do that we need to get out of the the survival the stress response so the survival instinct state right yeah. and so i was thinking oh well if i help people with stress then eventually they'll get there. And then I was thinking, but you, I, I need to be able to be relatable to people. And I've been through this uh, breakup situation and I know how it felt and I know the mistakes to avoid because I've done them and I've hurt people that I really cared about without trying to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this year is going to be about, yeah, putting my voice, my, my voice out, out there. Um, reaching out to people 
and I need, yeah, creating more content. But the whole, the whole um, goal that I have with my practice is really help people take care of themselves, uh, getting connected to their body, um, working out the grief of, of the relationship, because really like when the relationship ends, it's like a little death of whatever your life was before that point. And now you need to figure out how you're going to make a new version of yourself without that person. And then deal with the challenges that life throws at you and always having a positive attitude in the, in the, the way you build your, your future. Because you can have everything you want if you if you have the right mindset and you take the right steps, and that's really what I want to help people do navigate. Often, often you know, like people people don't always understand what coaching is, and I feel like coaching is really that we don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. We're human beings, like everyone, and we're learning too. But there are things a good what a good coach does is really asking the questions that will allow the other person to come to their own realization so they can feel in control of their lives. And then we help them take action steps that will go in the direction, that will help them go in the direction they want to go to. So I'm excited about it. I feel like it's going to go really well and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> And where's the best place if someone wants to connect with you? Okay, so you can find me on Instagram, uh, Alex Beasley Coach. That's what it's that's what it's called. Um, and for now, for now, I'm only on Instagram. That's where I operate most. You can find me on Facebook as well, Alexandra Beasley. And uh, we'll see we'll see what comes next. But for now, that's that's pretty much what it is. Beautiful, Alex. Oh. Guys, if you're in a relationship in business or in your personal life and you're still holding on to something, a grudge, frustration, anger, remorse, guilt, victimhood, it's time to release that into the ocean and let it drift away. Let it wash away so that you can move on with your life. And if you resonated with this episode, Feel free to drop a comment, share it with a friend who might be going through a difficult relationship right now, and reach out to Alex or myself if you want to connect on a deeper level. You guys know where to find me, at Dave Goldevolve on Instagram, and we'll see you in the next episode.